Thursday. I am in early this morning because I have to prep a lab for CP. It's one of the easiest labs I do. All you need is baking soda and vinegar. My students are designing an air bag today. So um, it's definitely a change from the lab I used to do. So I used to do the precipitation of lead to iodide. I would use lead to nitrate and I would use potassium iodide and they form the precipitate and filter. And you know, lead containing compounds always make me nervous. So I decided you know, a few years ago once I got my new job here at the school that I'm currently teaching at, um, I said, you know what, I'm gonna kind of change things up a bit and I started adapting the lab that they all did, which was just a very simple airbag lab. So I will definitely tell you all about the details of it. Um, we actually have standardized testing today and my room is in use. So I have to clean up the classroom a little bit. I have to make copies, but I'll be sure to check in with you guys a little bit later on to tell you all about the lab today. I just sat down to eat my lunch and it's supposed to be a kit and there's nothing in the kit. There's no dressing. Come on, Fresh Express. This is unacceptable. I like look through my bowl. There's no, uh, I am so disappointed right now. I can't even tell you. <laughs> Make sure I didn't miss it. Nope, nope, nothing in there. All right, I don't wanna eat this without dressing. Whatever. I will eat my fruit salad then. I just finished my um, fruit salad, but I found these up in my cabinet. So I think I might just have a little bit of my salad with this on top. This is actually really good and um, low calorie, but high protein. So I really like to have these too. Well, it's the end of the day. I had lab with two of my CB classes. And as I already mentioned earlier today, I had standardized testing. Fortunately, I was very lucky. I only had um, just really a duty period where I was kind of giving people breaks during the time that they were testing. So that made it kind of nice and easy. I always get so nervous whenever I'm testing because I'm like, I don't want to do anything wrong. And you know, I have to fill out an irregularity report. Um, so I was, I was happy. I had a little bit more of a low key type of morning and I just had a student come in and visit me. So I didn't get a chance to hop on here, but it's about 345. And so I wanted to catch you up on what I did with the CP class today. As I mentioned, I have always done the precipitation of lead to iodide as my limiting reactant, even my percent yield lab with students. And while it's a very cool lab, the students love the yellow precipitate that forms, it is kind of dangerous to be using lead containing compounds. So um, when I came to this school and they did a stoichiometry lab that had the students basically design an airbag, I was like, wow, this is much quicker, much easier. It can do, they could do it in one period and we can even bring some gas laws into the actual calculations. So that was, a really nice part of this lab. Um, what I did do ahead of time is I asked the students to watch a pre-lab video on how to use the ideal gas law to calculate moles of gas. Um, in particular, I used um, acetic acid and I used sodium hydrogen carbonate. So that produces carbon dioxide. And um, there were a couple of challenges actually within the lab. So within the lab, the students are asked to figure out a way to measure the volume of the bag. So I give them just like a typical Ziploc bag and they measure the volume of the bag. I provide large graduated cylinders and ideally what the students will do is they'll fill the bag up with water, they'll seal it, make sure there's no air bubbles in there, and then they pour that volume of water into a large graduated cylinder. That allows them to get the volume that the gas or the CO2 will occupy, and then I have them use PV equals NRT to solve for the moles of gas, 
And then based on the amount of CO2 that they calculate, they can back calculate towards the sodium hydrogen carbonate to decide how much of that they need. And then they can also decide on how much vinegar they need. And so um, this lab is nice because I'm able to talk about how substances in this case are reacting stoichiometrically, where you have just the amount of one to react with another. And these, are, these calculations are a little different than what we've been doing because when we've been calculating limiting reactants, for example, we've been really just looking at the reactants and converting into how much products you can produce. But here, we're looking at how much of one reacts with the other. And so I like that the students can see this now because now what they're recognizing is like, oh, this is a similar calculation to what we do when we're calculating how much of a excess reactant reacts and then of course how much is left over. This was a great lab and the kids had a great time. And probably the best part of this is when the kids actually mix the components together. So besides challenging them to find the volume of the bag, I also challenged them to figure out a way to have the components mix so that they don't lose any gas. I saw a lot of creativity here in that students can use like film vials. They could put their baking soda in like a film vial. I actually saw some students take the baking so to put it in like the corner of the baggie, twist it so that there's no vinegar that can get inside. And then when they're ready for them to mix, they untwist it and then they can start to react. My period two did a great job. The bags were very, very firm. Um, my period nine, it was okay. They were struggling, I think, with the calculations. So I don't think their calculations were quite right. And so that's what's kind of nice about the lab is you can see how good of a job they did with the calculations by what their bag looks like. So um, that was kind of the fun part of the activity. So this is the last stop before we start some gas law stoichiometry. This was kind of a preview of gas law stoichiometry. We'll be moving into gas law stoichiometry and we'll be looking at percent yield next week and then they will be ready for their assessment on stoichiometry. I can't believe how fast um, this unit went by. I feel like it was a lot quicker um, for some reason. I don't know if it's because I've been really holding them accountable with those quarter sheet quizzes on a regular basis, um, but I just feel like the students are able to move on a little bit more quickly because they're being assessed more frequently. Well, I think that's it for me. I am going to get out of here. I hope you had a wonderful week with your students. And as always, I'll be sure to check in with you all next week.